Hey guys, um, I'm Jessica. I am the founder of Abundant Business Moms. I am a therapist and a business owner and a coach. And I have been asked by Mallory to come and talk with you guys today about creating space for what matters most. And we're definitely getting to that, but first of all, educators, I have to say thank you. Um, you guys have been through the freaking ringer this year, um, ever since March, having to like just pivot and change and do digital and virtual and in-person and masks and plexiglass and I don't know exactly where you guys are all from, but um, I know there's, there's varying um, requirements about how to manage this pandemic and you guys have stepped up. And so I am a mom of two kids. I live in Georgia. Um, I've been married for 15 years and I've got a 10 year old and a nearly seven year old. So they are in fifth and first grade and we're doing virtual. And let me tell you, I don't even, I would never have the patience to be an educator because here's the thing, my, um, you know, my first grader of course is confused um, most of the time. Um, and my fifth grader is like, uh, he's just like, you know, he's just terrible. He's just a fifth grader and I love him, obviously. Please understand that. Um, but for his teacher, I, I mean, virtual school and he are not terribly simpatico. So what I just really want to tell you guys is I'm really grateful for all that you do. And it is my privilege and honor to be able to give back just a little bit to kind of help you out. So I'm really, really proud of, of, for all of you and grateful to all of you. I cannot wait for the day when things go, you know, back to normal. Who knows what normal's ever going to be like, but I am looking forward to that day of seeing my children come and go on the school bus. I can't wait for that. Um, at any rate, so Miss Mallory asked me to come and talk with you guys about creating space. And I think that that is a really important, powerful thing. Of course, it's the thing that I do, um, but I really think that it's important. The way that I look at creating space, there's a lot of different, a lot of different ways I'm going to kind of approach this with you guys today. I don't have like a like a script or anything I'm following. So hopefully this is all going to make sense to you. But the way that I look at it is number one, you have to figure out what matters most, right? Because if our mission is to create space for what matters most, we have to have some notion as to what that is. Now it doesn't have to be like one singular thing because immediately you're going to say, Oh, well, my family, um, probably. And if you do, that's fine and that's great, but that doesn't mean you're not allowed to have other outside interests. So when I think about what matters most, I think about fulfillment and I think about balance. So there are times when my family 100% is gonna be the most important thing and they matter more than anything else and just don't even bother me because I'm with my family. There are times for that. Then there are times when my work matters most and I'm, you know, doing a virtual session and I've got a kid coming in and I'm shoving him back out if he's not bleeding, right? So I can say all day long that my family matters most, but to me, it's more about fulfillment, balance, making, um, creating that life that you really dreamed of. So if you dreamed of having a family, fantastic. If you dreamed of being a teacher, fantastic. One doesn't have to win out over the other. Um, so I want you guys to take just a couple of minutes and um, really think through what matters most to you. So guys, whether you're watching live or later, um, go ahead and in the comments, just right here, one or two things that fit into your what matters most category. And don't feel like you have to have it all completely um, figured out because you, that's, that's not the point yet. <laughs> you will figure it out. There's a lot of self discovery that goes along with all of this. So don't feel like you have to have some perfect answer, but if there's like one or two things that you know, kind of fits into that category, um, go ahead and put that in the comments again, whether you're watching live or later. 
So let's see, I'm blind. Oh, Mallory likes that, so that's fantastic. Hi, Mallory. Um, okay, so, and she put also family, passion for work, and self-care. Yeah, boom, amazing. That's, um, and that sounds like balance to me. That sounds like um, abundance. So my kind of, um, my way of really um, enveloping all of it is to use the word abundance. Um, abundance just feels abundant. It feels good to me. So that includes family. It includes work. It includes helping others. It includes taking care of myself. It includes walking the dog, playing tennis. I mean, there's lots of different things that that kind of all falls into. And so that's one of the things that's really kind of powerful. And Anna is watching, but I can't see. I'm sorry, I'm kind of blind, so I'm not good at seeing the comments while I'm doing this. Um, I should make you not comment then, but I'll love you to comment. So, um, okay, so again, back to number one. You have to figure out what matters most. Now, we have to create the space for it. And the way that I look at creating the space means that we are decluttering three specific areas. We are going to declutter, we're going to clear the clutter from our minds, our homes, and our schedules. So one thing that really is going to be important is to define clutter. So to me, clutter is anything that is neither joyful nor useful. So that goes for the things that are in our mind. It goes for the things that are in our home and it goes for the things on our schedule. You know, I have to go like to the dentist sometimes, right? I don't necessarily consider that to be joyful, but it's not clutter either. I do have to go to the dentist, right? Like we do have to get our teeth cleaned. So that's going to stay in my schedule. I'm not going to declutter that. The things that, in, that belong in our head are things that are either joyful or useful. The things that belong in our home are either joyful or useful. And again, with our schedule. So we're going to look just step by step. So again, we have our definition of clutter. Clutter is anything that is neither joyful nor useful. Now we're gonna look at a couple of steps to clear some of our clutter. So I'm gonna start with our mind, okay? So in our mind, and this is like, honestly, this, this is the biggest, and this takes a long time to really get all the way there. Um, but we're going to try to clear a little bit. Um, so in our mind, we constantly have, um, almost like these tapes playing. We constantly have like our, our sort of our soundtrack, our background noise, but it's not usually song. Sometimes it is, but a lot of times what it is, is it's our beliefs. It's our mindset. It's what we, it's what our go-to thoughts are. So the last time that you made a mistake, did you say to yourself, hmm, I made a mistake? Or did you say, I'm a big fat loser? Because if you're like most people, unfortunately, and this is clutter, if you're like most people, you said I'm a big fat loser or some variation. That is clutter. It is neither joyful nor useful. Saying to yourself, I made a mistake can be useful. It doesn't really feel joyful, but it can be very useful because it allows you to check in with yourself and say, oh, what did I do wrong? How could I do it better next time? How could I get this right? It allows for growth. But saying to yourself, I'm a big fat loser, that doesn't allow for growth. That feels like a, like a constant state. It feels like there's no other options there. Well, I made this mistake because I'm a big fat loser. And so that's just who I am. And y'all better get good with it because that's just how it is. That doesn't serve you. It is clutter. So there's a process of being able to look and pay attention to these automatic thoughts. When you first wake up in the morning, do you say, oh, I didn't get enough sleep. It's too early. Why is this happening to me? Clutter. Those thoughts are neither true nor helpful. They are not helpful. They are not serving you. They are not joyful and they are not useful. Okay. But saying, yay, today's another day. 
I'm so grateful I woke up, right? I'm so grateful that I woke up in this nice soft bed. That's a useful thought. So your process for clearing the clutter from your mind is just to pay attention in one particular area. Um, and it could be like the first thoughts that you have when you wake up in the morning. It could be the thoughts that you have when you're stuck in traffic. It could be the thoughts that you have when you make a mistake, but try to focus on one specific area because we've got cluttered thoughts everywhere, just so you know, like that's, that's totally normal, but it's also not helpful. <laughs> just because something's normal doesn't mean that it's helpful. Um, so if you can be in a space where you just choose one space in your life, one area in your life, it could be the moment you walk through the doors to get into your classroom. Pay attention. Pay attention to the thoughts that are going on as you walk through the doors into your classroom and see what pops up for you. Are the thoughts clutter or are they joyful or are they useful? So if, again, if you're watching live or, live or later, um, as you enter your workplace, whether it's your classroom or wherever it is that you work, I want you to go ahead and say, do you imagine that the predominant thoughts, the main thoughts, the biggest, most loudest thoughts are clutter, useful, or joyful? And just go ahead and put that in the comments too. Once you've kind of established that, the way to clear the clutter is first to identify it, but then to replace it. So when you are walking into your classroom next time, if you've noticed, if you have identified that your, that your primary thoughts are clutter, um, what you're going to do is the next time that you go into your classroom, you are going to try to have a very either useful or joyful thought. You are going to say to yourself and you're going to, and you're going to create this right now. So right now I want you to create yourself a mantra and it could just be super easy. Like it's going to be a good day. I'm ready to teach. My students are ready to learn, right? Like it could be something that's very, um, it, it doesn't need to be long. It doesn't need to be involved. It doesn't need to be any big thing, but you know, I'm ready to teach. My kids are ready to learn. It's going to be a good day. Something in that neighborhood and you're going to commit to saying it every stinking time that you enter your place of work, whether that is your, um, your bedroom because that's where you're teaching virtually or whether it is your classroom, wherever it is that you're going. I want you to really pay attention to that. So that is one way, that's one small area that you're gonna clear the clutter from your brain. Next, we're gonna really work on clearing the clutter from your home. And again, we're going to stick really, really small because this stuff can get really involved, um, which is why I have a whole group to talk about this kind of stuff, but I'm kind of condensing it for you guys now and I want you to hear it. So um, in your home, you might find that there are certain areas like countertops or bins or corners or closets or um, your desk. Oh my gosh, desks, right? That co that collects a whole bunch of stuff that is neither useful nor joyful, which makes it clutter, okay? So I want you to identify one area of your physical space. Now it could be in your workspace or your home space, but I want you to identify one area, pretty small. I don't want it to be like some big thing like your garage like a relatively small area that tends to collect clutter. And again, if you are watching live or later, go ahead and put in the comments, what would be one of those areas? What would be kind of a hot spot for clutter? Um, so a desk, a corner, a small closet, um, a bin, you know, uh, your coat rack, any kind of place that sort of really catches your clutter. And we've got laundry. Okay. Oh, today I am going to help. I love that, Mallory. That's awesome. Um, so finding that one small area, what you're going to do is you're going to, once you're in that small area, you're just going to be very deliberate. You're going to give yourself an hour. 
You can do this in much smaller increments, but you can't do it for longer than an hour. So you're going to give yourself anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour, and you're literally going to go through whatever that space is. So we've got laundry and dresser so far. You're going to go through that space and you're going to say to yourself, you're going to pick up each thing and you're going to say, is this joyful? If it is, keep it. Is it useful? If it is, keep it. If it's neither joyful nor useful, off it goes. Now, depending on the thing, it's going to be something you sell, something that you donate or something that you trash. Any of those are fine. Just um, kind of recognize that the main point is that it's got to go. Okay. We only keep things in our home that are useful or joyful. When we have a whole bunch of extra junk, then that is taking away from the space. Because remember, we're trying to create space for what matters most. So when we have a whole bunch of extra junk laying around, then we don't have space for the important stuff. Having a cluttered space can also create a cluttered mind. Um, there's been a lot of studies around anxiety and clutter. For a lot of people, clutter can be a very big anxiety trigger. Um, I have a person that I work with, uh, she's the office next to me, and walking into her office, so she's a therapist, and you would think that, in theory, walking into a therapist's office, it would feel like calm and relaxing. She's, <laughs> she's a good therapist, but God love her, she does not have a tidy or calm or relaxing space. She's got stacks of paper everywhere and, and walking into her office causes me anxiety. It's just, it feel, it does not feel like there's space. So paying attention to these small areas, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to commit to working on clearing that clutter. And again, just ask yourself the questions. Is it joyful? Yes. Is it useful? Yes. Is it clutter? No. If it's neither joyful nor useful, it's clutter. All right, last thing, um, and then I'm gonna wrap up. So this, you're gonna basically repeat, repeat the same process for your schedule. Now listen, I love scrolling social media just as much as anybody else. But I think that there's a point, there's something called, a, what is it called? Um, Diminish, diminished returns, a law of diminished, diminished returns. There is a point where scroll in social media stops being joyful or useful and it becomes clutter. It might start out joyful. I might really enjoy it for a little bit, but as I scroll and as my eyes are getting, you know, bloodshot and every other thing, now it's become clutter. This is something that you have to think about in your schedule. You have to pay attention to the sorts of things that you are putting in your schedule. If you look at your phone usage for the week and it says, um, you know, 18 hours on the phone or whatever huge number, you have to think, did I need all of those hours? Did I find all of those hours joyful? So pay attention to the things that enter your calendar. Sometimes, like unless you are like really, really type A, you don't literally have everything calendared out that you're gonna do for the day. You're not gonna write down shower. You're not gonna write down like do laundry, or maybe you, you might if you really need to make sure it happens. But not everything that you do in a day finds its way to your schedule. So you have to be paying attention. You have to be aware. Is what I'm doing right now bringing me joy or useful? And if you could genuinely answer that question as yes, this is joyful or yes, it's useful, rock on, do it, keep on with it. But check in with yourself. So you could even set an alarm on your phone for say every 30 minutes, just to ask yourself, am I, is what I'm doing right now joyful, useful, or clutter? And if you start to find that a lot of it ends up being clutter, you're going to need to fill the space with something that matters, right? Because if you are constantly doing things that are clutter, now you don't have the space for what matters most. So you can think about, you know, well, I could be taking a walk. That would be more what matters to me. I could be playing with my kids. I could be grading papers. I could be, 
you know, researching lesson plans, like there's any number of things that you could do instead. So I want you to really think that through. So set a, you, so you can set a timer for on your phone for every 30 to 60 minutes. And that's just your mindful check. Like you're not, there's nothing else you have to do. You just have to quick ask yourself, okay, whatever it is that I'm doing right now, does it feel joyful or useful? And if it is, continue. And if it does not, then I'm sorry, you just gotta choose something else. Choose something that would be either useful or joyful. Maybe it's when you get up and clean out that closet. Maybe it's when you're working on playing with the kids. Any number of things like that. So all right, that was a lot, um, That's but that's what I got for you. Um, I would like to invite you. So I am hosting an Abundance Masterclass. It's a free masterclass in my group. I will put a link in the comments to get into my group. Um, from this coming Monday, so October 5th through the 10th. It's gonna be every day, um, Monday through Saturday, Eastern Standard Time, 1230. Um, if you join my group, it'll be very clear what you're supposed to do. Um, so I do hope to see you there. And um, just reach out, ask questions, um, post comments, let me know how I can better serve you. And thank you to Miss Mallory. I'm really grateful for the opportunity and grateful to Miss Anna. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you lovely people. And I just hope to continue to support you. And again, thank you educators. You're so needed, you are so valuable. Please keep on keeping on. And if I can help serve you, then we're just gonna keep on keeping on. All right, take care guys, have a wonderful week and I hope to see you in group next week. Bye guys.